Well, we're gonna start by sauteing the vegetables, I mean the, 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 the onions and, and, and garlic. But before you saute everything, I'm gonna just try to see if this is working. So when my, yeah. So when it's time for sauteing, everything is hot. The beginning of the recipe when you see, you see like a pureed shrimp, cashews, peanuts, scallions, chilies, and garlic. So I made already the puree. It's not gonna be a very liquid and puree. It's gonna be just like a little thick um, paste because this is a mix of dry, dry, um, uh, sh uh, sh dry shrimp, which I'm gonna pass around for you to see, take a look. Dry shrimp, cashews, uh, onions. So you see nothing is too wet. So you're gonna get this paste. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. If you wanna do a little cheaper and you don't have all these cashews and unsalted spinach, whatever, you can use the good old peanut butter. It does the same taste and doesn't change anything. You pay a, a dollar and a dollar in the dollar store and you're good to go. But the, the original recipe brings cashews and peanuts. So I made a paste and this is gonna be here when I'm gonna use. So we're gonna saute the, the onions and, and, and the garlic and we're gonna give a little, like three minutes just, just to give a little saute in here. By the way, this uh, recipe you see is good for 10 people, but if your audience eat a lot, I would say five. Um, but it's good for 10 people. Is this still a little, but that's fine. Um, this oil here that you see is a little yellow and this is called aceite de dende. Dende oil is like a palm oil. Uh, it's a very traditional um, oil that we use. It gives a little flavor and also gives a nice yellow color when you make your stew. If you can get the, the oil, always you can find at the farmer's market, the cop, cop farmer's market, you can use um, coconut oil. It's good too. And so you saute like two to three minutes. I, I prep a little extra. So basically you, you follow the recipe. I think everybody here cooks, right? So always we adjust. If you like a little bit more onions, just put in there, it's, it's not gonna hurt. And the garlic as well. I got a lot of garlic because I, I think it gives a, a nice flavor to the fish. Since I didn't marinate or did anything with the fish, the fish and the shrimp are pretty much uh, plain. So you saute both and I think it's time for us to add this paste. When you add the paste, you're gonna be fast because you're gonna see it's gonna be like very, very fast. Uh, the paste cooks very fast because you mix peanut butter and you mix all the other stuff. You're gonna see that it's gonna, maybe it's gonna even um, stick in the bottle. So when you add the paste, just make sure that you start stirring. And the paste, when you add the paste, you're gonna see that your kitchen is gonna smell like shrimp all over because the dry shrimp, I don't know if you all had the, the opportunity, they, um, they are a little salty and they're very small, but they got a lot of flavor. And it calls for eight ounces in the recipe. I think it's a little too much. So if you feel like it's too much, just you know reduce to half. And I would love to have a camera here or uh, something for you to see is already sticking in my pan. So what I do is I let it stick for a little bit because I wanna deglaze this with the tomatoes. The tomatoes are gonna do the job. They are gonna um, break and the water from the tomatoes is gonna do the job. So I, because I like flavor, I'm gonna throw a little bit more. But this here probably has like two cups. And is this sticking here, which is great. So then we're gonna throw the tomatoes. And I don't know if you all are smelling, but it smells pretty good in here already. It does? 
And see, we just, we don't have everything. We just have the, the dry, the little, do you see the little thing? It makes a complete difference. Uh, I would say if you can find in the regular stores the dry shrimp, usually you don't find everywhere. I usually buy at the H Mart. You guys know, you are familiar with H Mart. That's where I get my uh, dry shrimp, all these different things. One thing that you um, got to pay attention is don't, I mean, we can substitute a lot of stuff, but certain things I don't. For example, if you don't have the coconut oil, if you don't have the palm oil, don't use butter because this dish is already very um, strong. It's very rich in flavor because it's, we're going to build flavors in here and I'm going to bring the coconut milk and cream. So it is a lot of fat involved. If you saute your stuff with butter, it's going to be a little too rich. And you don't, have, you don't want to have the you know, stomach cake later. And you don't, don't want to give that to your guests as well. So now we got here everything break. Everything is, not, is, is good in here. Nothing is sticking because I deglaze my pan with the, with the tomatoes. I'm gonna add some bell peppers. And I like to do them um, small dices. And if you all like julienne, it's fine too. Some people, uh, some women in Brazil, they love the julienne, the julienne cuts. I love both, but I was in a hurry to prep this, so I got the, the small dices. And we add this and then we're gonna add some of the mix with bread and uh, milk in your recipe you can see so we did the saute we did the the shrimp paste and i, I add onion i saute and now i'm adding the bread and milk the bread and milk is very simple you just set aside bread coconut milk and mix in the food processor. So there is a lot of prep that you have to do. And if you wanna do this for lunch time or for dinner time, you even can do in the day ahead. Like you can make this dish and serve the next day. It's uh, actually, I, I like to do the day before because the, the flavors just settle and they are awesome. But anyway, you can do your prep like I did the day before and the day that you serve, you just make it. And it's gonna take probably like 30 minutes or even less. So this is the thickening agent. That's what is gonna give the thick, um, I mean the thick, um, um, yeah. What, what did you say? Texture, yeah. You guys help me out here with my English. So you're gonna see that um, this is pretty thick. I did last night and I, want to settle because the gluten and all that kind of stuff is going to solidify and then it's going to be perfect. Once you start salting all this, you're going to see that I'm probably going to move around, move a little bit for you all to see the pan, but it, it looks very thick. That's what we want to have. We want to have a final product of something like this. Okay, this is not final yet, but we want that. So I have an extra one in there and we need to still cook the fish and the shrimp. If you cook on this, you're not gonna cook your shrimp and you're gonna cook your, your fish, it's gonna be too thick. So then we add the fish um, broth. I made the fish broth with some mackerel, some shrimp, and some bay leaves and some paprika and cumin, all the good, good stuff. And, um, and a little bit of salt. So, and I would say be careful with the salt because that shrimp has salt. Then we're gonna see how it's gonna be before we put in any salt. So here I have around three cups of fish stock. And I want to show you guys something here that it makes a big difference, which is 
the the chili. The chili is um, is a smoked flavor. Is a dry chili. Uh, the brand is this one. You all are um, able to find this at farmers markets as well. And if you don't find it, shoot me an email. I'll give you the address of places that I usually shop. So we're gonna cook this. The recipe calls for 30 minutes. And now we're not gonna be here at 30 minutes cooking this. We're gonna just try to get um, a good, a good um, salt, I mean, a good boiling and, and, and bringing all the flavors together. I'm gonna get some bay leaves as well. This is, makes a big difference. And, um, and then when I get um, a, good, a good boiling point, I am going to throw some, some cod and some shrimp. Um, I have my, my stew thickening and it's still not in the consistent that I want. Are you okay? Um, in the consistent that I want, that's the time when you see that is a little liquid still, we can put the cod to cook. I would say five to six minutes is a very thin uh, piece of cod. I have, actually guys, don't have the cod in your, in your um, handout because I was like copying and pasting and stuff and I end up forgetting about the, the cod, but you can add to your recipe. I have in here two pounds of cod and I have two pounds of shrimp. The shrimp you can buy um, cooked if you want. I like to buy raw, but I, I buy like the raw that is already clean. Um, so it gives me just the, you know, the skin to have and I use the skin to make my, my fish, fish broth. Um, you can use cod, you can use, um, I, I would not suggest you to use tilapia because tilapia is too flaky and probably is gonna melt and it's not good. Unless you, you know, just doing some, it's like you wanna do something with tilapia, you have some tilapia in your freezer that you wanna get rid of. So I would say yes, but the best, the best fish for this um, recipe is shark. And maybe people say, oh, this is crazy. But uh, the shark is easy to handle because they are very thick and, and, and you know, it, hand, it handles uh, a stool. Uh, you can find it at the, the Cobb Farmer's Market as well. Price is very good on the shark and you can try. But um, I'm using cod today and cod goes really well with this um, recipe. It cooks, it cooks faster. Um, if you, for example, try to make your dish and it's not thick enough, you always can, you know, add some tapioca or some flour um, or even some bread. Like you can grab some pieces of bread and start, you know, thickening your, your um, stew. Um, I don't use a particular um, brand of uh, bread. I like the white bread, but if you like gluten-free or whatever, you know, uh, feel free to use the rest of your bread, the croutons you have that you had a Caesar salad. I mean, you, you, this, is a good, this is a good dish for that. Uh, one thing in Brazil is this dish comes from a poor area up north where uh, the slaves usually uh, used to live. Uh, a lot of a lot of people say many stories. I'm not sure if it's if it's true or not. But they say that in that time um, they didn't have much to eat. So whatever they got and they create some dishes. Probably it's true. Um, sometimes at home we don't have a lot of stuff to eat. We put everything together and make a nice meal. So I think that was uh, true with with them. And um, and this is from the coast of North. Uh, they have very good seafood. They have fresh fish. They have main, the main um, career in there, the main profession in there is, uh, are the guys that are fishermen. So you have fresh fish every day. So they really try to create some you know, good, good meals with fish and shrimp because it's in an abundance. So, 
Um, and um, I'm, I'm not from the north, but uh, my grandparents, the other side of uh, my mom's side, they are from north. So I have a little uh, northern blood on me in there. So our, our stool is getting thicker and nicer. I just need to taste to see if it's uh, good with salt. Yeah, it needs a little bit more. I'm going to add a little later. If you like this, very hot and spicy, you're welcome to. Brazilian culture, people think that we eat everything super hot, super spicy, and it's not true. We like everything with, we like cooking with fresh ingredients because it makes completely total difference when you cook with fresh ingredients. So um, I add, a, we have a little bit of spice in here because I don't know how you guys like your food, so I try to be very mild. But if you are going to serve this for people that love those hot food, go ahead and do it. Um, my stew is getting almost ready. I'm getting ready here to get my shrimp. But before that, I want to miss, I mean, I want to meet the ladies down there. Guys, I'm going to show you that it's really boiling. And the ideal way to serve this dish is cooking like this, let it set for like at least 20 minutes and then serve because it's gonna get all the thickness from the bread and all that. But you know, um, at least you all have an idea how it's made and you are gonna develop your own flavors. So I'm confident that you're all gonna do a wonderful job. I'm gonna add some salt to our stew. Did you guys like this so far? It's interesting, right? It's, it's a very different um, way to make a, a stew and it's a different, you're gonna see that the, 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 the flavors come together at the end. And this is gonna be very good after an hour. And I'm gonna eat at home, you all are not, but that's okay. <laughs> you all make it and, and send me an email, I'll go to your house. Me and Rick, we're going there. So at this point, I'm gonna add the, the shrimp. And um, how, what time is it now? Oh, okay, great. I was shooting for 30 minutes. Um, that's what uh, we're doing. And this shrimp, actually, I'm not gonna cook that much. I'm gonna do like three minutes. So it's four o'clock now? Yeah, 4 uh, 3 I'm gonna turn this off and um, you all have any questions about this dish or any questions at all? Okay, I think our, our dish is done. And you can see it's not as thick as I wanted because this needs to be settled. When settles, it gets like, a, like grits because we are using bread. So, you know, the thickness, the thick process, it takes a while. But um, like after two hours, this is going to be perfect. So it's a good thing too when you want to do your parties at home and people are coming, you can make your dish, go get ready, come, everything's perfect. I think that's what it is for today. And I thank you guys for coming and appreciate it. Thank you.